much, Audrey. I want to start today as we look at the watermark results to say thank you for coming because sometimes we get watermark results and we say, oh, yay, pretty, done, and we move on. And so our hope today is to take a step back from our own personal ones to be able to look at the college ones overall. And so as we begin today, we'll go through the PowerPoint. We'll look at some themes that we see from the watermark results over the spring and last year's past fall, and then engage in some hopefully good and fruitful discussion. And so I'm grateful beyond words that you are here today to join with us as we look at are in SCC watermark results from 2023-2024. So first thing first, just in case you didn't know, where do I go to get my watermark results? If you go to elearn.nscc.edu, type in your handy dandy A number and your password. On your home screen, there's going to be this beautiful link that says click here to access evaluation kit for evaluation information and results. And so that's the link that you want to click on. Then it will pull up and show the semesters that you've taught. It will also show terms, and this is really important. This group who came together about a year ago, year and a half ago, looking at watermark results, some people kept saying over and over again, it would be lovely if we could see these by first seven week, second seven week, and 15 week. And your wish became granted, which is a lovely thing. So the great thing about us coming together allows us to be able to get data in new ways to be able to see differences between parts of term, which is a great thing. During the session that is being recorded, please note that we're gonna look at college-wide results only. We are not diving into your results. We're not looking at any individual results, only college-wide results. And so I always want to emphasize that as we get forward so no one feels like we are just spotlighting them as an individual, but we're going to look at the big overarching. And so I will start by letting you know we that the description for this session said that we're looking at spring, and we are. But I also included falls data also so that we could see a whole academic years together to help us be able to have a better picture of what happened with Watermark over all of the last academic year. And so as you look, the thing that's probably going to stand out to you the most on this response rate comparison is the fall 2023 first seven week. There was a whopping 71.15% response rate. That is because a mistake was made. And the mistake that was made said that after a certain point during the watermark surveys, students had to take the watermark to access their D2L course shells. And so once we realized that mistake had been made, it was turned off. But we also recognize, because it's good to learn from mistakes, that when students were required to respond, the response rate went up tremendously. And we'll be able to look and see, but there's not a huge variation in the responses comparatively between those. Because sometimes we've said in the past, well, if students are required to do it, it's going to make us look bad. They're going to be very negative as they respond. Now, as we look at the other semesters, when we cut it off and made it where people didn't have to, Response rate dropped to 28.61%. Our first seven week and seven, second seven week in the spring had higher response rate than spring 15 weeks overall, which had a 28.88% response rate. So looking at this data, I think it's important for us to recognize as we go through and look at the data, we're getting between a 28.6% a 71.15% response rate from our students. Gracie, I see your hand. Talk to us. Um, I want to point out that the 15-week spring 2024 survey was given at a different time than it ever has been historically, and mm -hmm. communication got messed up, and so a lot of people were unaware that it was being given a week earlier than normal, and so that most likely did have a strong effect on it, so we should probably just keep our eyes open this semester and next semester to see if with better communication of that time change, if that re, uh, response rate goes up. 
Absolutely. And I love those insights because we have to remember there's a story behind the data, right? And so we look at the context of what's going on when we change the dates of when the survey is being given. All of that can play into what the response rate is. And so that's so helpful. All right, let's dive into fun data. Are we ready? I feel like we need a drum roll so we can be really, really excited. Question one, the instructor provided options for me to connect with them in any of these ways, in person, virtually, email, or other methods like phone slash text. Now, as we go through this slideshow, our first column is always gonna be first seven, first seven week for fall 2023. Second column is fall 2023, 15 week and seven week combined. And then based on your feedback, how lovely we have spring first seven, spring second seven, and then the spring 15 week. As you look across, you will see always is strong. Always is very, very strong. It's also really nice to notice in every single one of these columns, rarely and never don't make up 5%. And so the work that you're doing in your D2L course shells and your syllabi are paying off because you are providing to your students multiple ways for them to be able to connect with you. And they are recognizing that they have these ways of connecting with you. Our second question on the survey, the instructor responded when I contacted them. Always again, very, very, very strong, rarely and never much less in our percentage points, under 6%. Overall, around 6% was the highest for fall 2023 for rarely and never. We add those two together. I know many times we are told students' complaints are, well, I contacted the instructor and they never responded. In this thing, we're seeing that overall response rates are very, very good. The instructor encouraged students to participate in class meetings and or online discussions. Always and usually take us out of the park there. Our rarely and never responses to question three are very, very low when you take them all together. Even when you add in the sometimes on those, we're looking at around 10 to 12% at the most responding there. The instructor gave clear explanations. Question four, always very, very high in the 70s across the board. Never the most was the highest in the fall 15 to second seven with a 3.62 there for not giving clear explanations. Question five, the instructor explained what I did well and how I could improve. We have some always here for our first seven week, which was in the six, high 68 percentile range. The others had increasing up into the 74% responses. I'm so sorry, I clicked early. When we look at feedback in this area, I think it's important to note that this question asks, what did they do well and how could they improve? So ensuring that as we give our grading feedback, we're praising the good while also showing areas for improvement is an important thing. I emphasize that because we usually think about that on the Ds, the Cs, the Fs. We may not always think about that on our high Bs and high As of providing additional ways for them to improve. The instructor showed respect for students and for their learning. High again, question six always was always above 80%, never, Highest was 3.13% in our 15 week and second seven from fall. I would re recommend this instructor to a friend. I always want to point out that when we redid our watermark questions, this is the one that the Student Government Association asked to have included there. And it scared faculty a little bit to add this one on. And so when we look at the responses, very positive overall. When you look at the always and the usuallys together, very, very strong. We do see that there are some who would never recommend that instructor to a friend, but 
overall, the question gives us really good data on the work that we're doing. The learning outcomes for this course were clearly stated. Always came in strong there again, 75.56 up to 83.2%, depending on semester. I think it's important to note never. Less than 2% across the board with only one semester, that for second seven week having a 1.73, all the others show less than 1% of students stated that. This course was organized in a way that helped me learn. We can see across the board, first seven, first seven weeks was a little lower on this one. Others were all in the 70s range. Our never are all below 3% for how the course is organized. Question 10, the course resources and or assignments were helpful in learning the course material. Again, very strong with our always and usually responses. Sometimes had less than 10% responses across the board, but ranging from 6.5 to 9.51 during the semester. And then rarely and never. Jessica, I see your hand. Talk to us. I just thought I'd point out that in the fall, first seven weeks is when we have the biggest NSCC 1010 cohort. Mm -hmm. It probably makes up more than half of the responses. So they don't love that class always. <laughs> so um, hopefully we get better at it. But y'all, you know, we're always striving, but keep that in mind. That might be explain why fall 2023 20, first seven week tends to be lower for a lot of these um, because of NSCC 1010. And I say that as its course lead. I also want to remind us that's the one where we told people they had to do it. And so whenever you have to do something, <laughs> you may not want to do it as much. And so I think as we look at the data, remembering NSCC 1010, its cohort is an important thing. I also think it's important to emphasize that even though they were required to do it, we're not skewing far off. Is it a little lower? Absolutely, yes. But it's not drastically different statistics-wise from semester to semester based on those or term to term. Grading policies for the course and assignments were clear. Again, first seven, first seven week was lower than the others, but not tremendously lower overall. And then our nevers, we're below 2% for every term. Now, I would love for that to be zero, but I want to make sure that we are clear as we go through and recognize that when over 80% of our students are saying they were always clear, that's something to celebrate. I completed assignments by the due date. Spend a minute here and kind of look. This is a student focused questions. Where did students say they completed their work? Always for the first seven was 52.18%. Fall, 62.26% said always, 6557 and spring 2024, first seven compared to 63.43 in second seven and 65.35 in the 15 week. Question 13, I asked questions when I did not understand. 59.4% said always for our first seven week in the fall, it jumped up for always in the other semesters, but I want to, and we're gonna talk about this in a little bit before we leave this screen. Look at how many students said sometimes rarely or never. Again, always and usually are stronger, but I think we need to spend some time in this area and we're going to in just a few moments, but I also wanted to emphasize the 
number of percentages and the number of responses of students who are saying they're asking questions only sometimes or rarely or never? And how can we think about building stronger ways for students to be able to ask? I called, emailed, or visited my instructor in their office, virtual office, when I needed help. Again, our always numbers are a little bit lower here. I apologize. I was trying to move my group of all of you on the screen. Rarely, never have a higher percentage on these when compared with other questions across the board. So insights, takeaways, things that we can think about. The first, as we've already mentioned, our participation rate. First seven week was really strong. When students were required to take it, it went up. Participation then decreased when that was removed, but we also changed the dates as Gracie pointed out. And so when we change the dates and timing of things, it can make it where that impacts our data. Other thoughts and reflection questions that I wanted us to spend a little bit of time with today. The majority of students responded always for the instructor providing ways to contact, encouraging student engagement and respect for students in their learning. As a college that's been focused on equity and leads and culturally responsive teaching practices, when we look at the results for these questions, the work that you are doing in the classroom and preparing for your online classes and preparing for students is being impactful. And so I want to thank you for that work because when we look at that data, the responses are very, very high. Christina, I see your hand. Talk to us. Hey there, Amy. You just mentioned this, and sorry, my uh, computer at the campus does not have a camera attached, so I apologize for just seeing my still photo there. But uh, the question that came through my mind just a minute ago when you mentioned, uh, obviously, the numbers are a little skewed when we required um, their participation in the semesters following that, there were some instructors that encouraged participation by random means. Some of them were extra credit, some of them were this or that. Have you been able to parse that out of these details or I'm wondering if anybody's bold enough or willing enough to um, share if you are in this Zoom meeting, if you would allow that. I don't know if you want to take the time uh, to see if perhaps if those activities or any activity may not have been extra credit, may have been something else, had in their sections increased participation. I love when hands fly up when you ask those type of questions. So I have taken it off full screen and I'm just going to remind everyone that right now we are still recording. And so when you are sharing things, if you don't want it to be recorded, you can just say pause and wait for it to pause. But I wanna make sure everybody's aware that we are recording as we share what we may have individually done. By hands, I see Audrey first, then Gracie, then Jessica, then Rachel. So Audrey, go first, talk to us. Yes, so the first semester I chose to offer um, extra credit for students to participate in the watermark. Um, I did see a dramatic increase. I think my highest class was like 56%, which was way different, closer to 30% um, normally. So it was way, you know, a lot more participation. Then this year it has dropped off again. And even though I did exactly the same things, everything exactly the same, it went back down and it was even lower so that my average was around closer to 28%, I think. Um, so I'm not sure what explains that. I do think we shifted the timing of the surveys. So that could have had something to do with it. Um, but uh, I was so excited when my numbers went up and then disappointed when they dropped again. Thanks, Audrey, for giving us both sides of the coin. Gracie. Um, so I had the same experience, Audrey. And uh, when I talked to students about it, uh, students told me basically they're surveyed to death uh, was, I mean, they did. Cause I, I said, I, I said, what's going on? They were like, I, I didn't even know it was the survey for this class. I get so many requests for surveys to fill out in my email and, you know, so that's something to be aware of. But I did something interesting to try to increase it this uh, this past spring. Um, and I, I did like Audrey offering extra credit individually. Well, 
I, I, for all of my classes, I said, I need at least 80% participation. I gave them the number of students that needed to do that in the class. And I said, if the, you don't get that participation in the class, nobody gets any extra credit. And it's amazing what peer pressure from students who really need those extra credit points can do. And it shot my response rates through the roof. So just to let you know, um, I'm not above being manipulative, <laughs> so, but it worked. <laughs> so anyway, just to throw that out there, but yeah, I never mind offering uh, the, the extra credit points I offered weren't enough to completely change somebody's, you know, grade. I know some instructors don't like to offer any extra credit, but any kind of uh, sweetening the pot, so to speak really helps with that response rate. Um, anyway. Gracie, thank you so much for that and for the emphasis on how it impacted through peer pressure to be able to move those numbers and move the needle for response rate. Jessica. I did what Gracie just said. I said two bonus points on the final exam. If the response rate gets above 70, no bonus for everyone. I won't know if you're one of the ones, but if the class response rate gets above 70, everyone gets two points. And if it doesn't, no one gets two points. And it worked, it worked in the fall and the spring. Yay for winning, Rachel. Rachel, you're muted. Do you mind restarting? Yes, yeah, sorry. So I'm in a little bit of a unique situation at Dixon and Humphreys County. We have a computer lab that's conveniently located next to our classrooms. So I have been walking my students over to one of the computer labs at either the start of the class or the end of a class and just saying, here, go fill out your surveys. You can take the last 20 minutes or whatever to do mine and everyone else's. And that seemed to be helping. Rachel, thank you for boosting all of ours. I will also say, Christina, on my web classes, hybrid classes where I don't get to see them every day, I give them a news announcement in the morning and the afternoon and email it to them. I'm like, hey, guys, we're at zero and zero is sad. And I don't like being sad because then I get grumpy and my eyes get puffy. So we really need to hit whatever percentage point. And then I email them in the afternoon and then say, thank you to you two who responded. Now we're at a 7% response rate. We're still failing. And as silly as it sounds, they start responding and responding even without me offering bonus points because I'll tell them, whew, guys, I'm still failing this class based on our grading thing. And we need to get at least to Amy being passing to get the rate farther up. And so... I think the communication can be there. Bonus points could be there. Sometimes just the gentle nudge of saying it's important. And I emphasized it's the pop-up window when you log into D2L because they didn't know what it was. And so I always tell them pop-up window instead of Xing it out, click it so that it'll go away and not bother you anymore. Christina, you unmute it. Talk to us some more. Oh, I just wanted to say thank you for those that input it and for your suggestion as well. Thanks, Amy. Other great questions or thoughts? Oh, Gracie says her students would rather fail her than tell them if you get a 100, it's failing. And so okay. they have to get there. Reverse mentality, right? People will have questions about it if you get to 100. Oh, and Amy? Yes. Oh, okay. I didn't, I can't find the thing again. I, I just found it anyway. I wanted to point something out about your, I like the way you went through the data, but when it, not, but um, something to keep in mind that I noticed that was a positive is the students that were, uh, sorry, the questions that were student directed, um, that increase from fall to spring, we could also claim as a win because students are learning better to be students, good students. Those low answers on um i turned things in on time and and i you know listened or, or whatever the students were asked i can't remember all the specific questions but those lower ones in the fall i noticed those numbers steadily went up in the spring and to me i i i don't know if this is valid but i was watching that and i was going oh that's really you know something we could bring to the administration hey look our students are actually learning how to be better students look at that progress from fall to spring what, uh, what do y'all think about that? 
Oh, that was a question for everybody. <laughs> Sorry. A lot of people are doing the nonverbal head bobs right now, kind of nodding along. I think it absolutely could. I think as we look at our persistence, we know that sometimes we lose students in the fall who don't make it to spring. But I also really love, as you mentioned, Gracie, they're responding better. And so they're learning the routine. They're getting their school clothes on kind of where they're uncomfortable in the classroom, comfortable knowing what to do to be able to build their skills in the classroom, which is so very, very important. Jessica, I see your hand. Talk to us. I'm wondering, to Gracie's point, uh, what the administration, you, you don't have to know the answer to this, but uh, I would really like to know, like, they, like, I don't see the administrators on this workshop, Zoom. Like, do they do this? Do they like look at the whole college results and discuss them? Like, and they watch or attend these two? Like, I don't know to just, cause I want them to know how we're doing the good news um, and how things improve to Gracie's point. Um, but I don't know, I don't know. I don't know if they're um, looking at this data. As a, as a college. So in Amy's limited knowledge of not being one of those, I know that they all have access to be able to access the reports within the watermark by college, by school, by campus. I don't know how often they spend time with it. I do also know that by the end of the month, we have to submit our faculty evaluation forms. And part of that includes our watermark data and an analysis of our results. And I think it is very fair in your yearly evaluation, in your promotion notebooks, in your tenure application, to pull this data from the entire college, from your school level and say, look at how we are doing as a whole. Look how I compare to the college as a whole. I mean, if your response rate is higher in any term than what the college response rate is, you're helping the college have a better response rate, right? And so emphasizing those things are a way for us to bring it to their attention. And while I know we're still being recorded, we have two completely new deans this year to the role at Nashville State. When we look at the experience across the college with our deans, many of them have come to Nashville State since Watermark was already in place. And I know looking at this room, others of us were here when idea surveys and we did it on paper with bubbles and all of these things. If we want this information to be looked at, then I think we need to be someone pushing it to the forefront to help. Can they look at it at any time? Absolutely they can. Do they know the history of where we have been? Possibly not. And so we have to be able to tell our story and what our data looks like. And so for you in your area, if you've been doing this a year, compare what your data was between terms, between set seven weeks. Compare what you've done with the college as a whole. In a few minutes, I'm going to drop in the chat and it's going to be like a waterfall, but I have for you the school level and then the college level report overall. So when you submit your data, if you want to, you can say, here's my data and here's the college's data as a whole. Compare. Or, here's my data. Here's school level data. Also, if you want to be able to use it for tenure applications, for promotion it's there for you to be able to kind of juggle and use and do because we can tell our story well. But I want to make sure that we can see beyond just here's what Amy's doing, because there's times I'm like, whew, mine's bad. And then I look at the entire college and I'm like, I'm not as bad as I thought. 
And it makes me feel better, right? Because without the comparison, it's hard for us to see what we're doing. It also could be as we're setting goals, because we're all in that lovely land of setting goals. It could be that we say, you know what? Right now across the college, this percentage of students are saying they rarely or never ask questions. That's a problem in my class. I want to move it for our school where the percentage isn't 5.9% to 8.02% saying they never ask questions to where it's 2% saying they never ask questions. To be able to help us shift some things that are there. Other good thoughts, questions, comments. Areas that you're just like, ooh, this really interested me and I want to know about it. You know that I teach communication, which is not the lovely land of math. But I also thought this was a really important thing for us to share. When we look at it by semester, these are the students who say, I completed assignments by their due date. The blue line is sometimes, orange line is rarely, gray line is never. As we're working on our courses, as we're looking at our syllabi policies this week, What's our late work assignment? Is it you don't get any late work, you get a zero? That's okay. I'm not knocking it. But I do think it's important for us to notice these percentages as we go across the board. Because these are students being maybe honest on a quiz, on a survey, right? And so some of them might be like, yeah, I never, but I'm choosing sometimes. but we recognize barriers get in our students' way, just like barriers get in our ways. Please hear me. I'm not saying that they don't get in our way also, but I think when we look at this data, one, it's a reminder that sometimes students are going to miss due dates. Very, very possible. I'll also say that it does also says completed assignments, which means they may not count quizzes or discussions or problems projects or papers within that. And so I think as we look at our data and as we look at how we're approaching students, are our students going to possibly miss assignments? Yes. Does that mean we don't have due dates? No, please hear me. That is not the intention at any way, shape or form. But it does mean it might be a really good time for you as an individual to say, did my late work policy work well for me last year? If the answer is yes, awesome. If the answer is no, right now is a really good time to work on it before you print those syllabi or post them in D2L. I promised you a plethora of files. They are slowly but surely going to pop up in chat. There are going to be one or two where you're going to be like, hey, Amy, there's not a health sciences for a seven week term. And I'm going to say, you're right because there were so few classes in that group that if we dumped it, it could identify it down to one or two teachers. And that's not fair. We don't ever wanna do something that points fingers at a group and causes heartache. And I'm trying to get my beautiful folder to come back up, but it made me, it got sad and it doesn't wanna hop up here. So give me just a moment. That lovely land of fun things that are in the chat are all of the spring data. What you're about to get is the beautiful and wonderful fall data. What I'm going to do now is hit stop on our recording.